All right, friends, we're about to get into the painting mix, and uh, I got this handy gift from DoD Spec Ops. Um, this is the Masterson's Stay Wet Handy Palette. The idea of a wet palette is that it keeps your paints from drying out while you're in the process of painting. So it comes with these sheets, which is basically just kind of like thick paper. Um, and on the bottom of this palette is a sponge. Okay, so following the directions, in cold water, I'm going to rinse off the sponge since this is the first time using it. And what that's going to do is basically give me, uh, it's going to get rid of any kind of residual material from uh, the making of this thing. So I'm just going to rinse this off in the sink. It says to do so under cold water. Get any factory chemicals off of it. And um, let the ridiculous amount of additional water get out of there. And then, under warm water, and this actually, the directions for this actually say, using the hottest water you can get from the tap. Place a sheet of Masterson acrylic paper in the sink or other water basin until the paper is fully submerged. Let the paper soak for about 15 minutes. Soaking it longer will not hurt the paper. So kind of an interesting concept. We're going to see where this puts us. Um, I'm just going to kind of wipe out the sink really fast first because I don't want chemicals and other crap getting on the paper. And then I'm going to let the paper soak for about 15 minutes and then I'll be able to put it on the sponge and that will make a nice wet palette for my paints. I think the important part is if you're doing multiple minis and you're going to be sitting down for a longer session, it's absolutely crucial to do a wet palette. And this is a very nice and fancy set, but you don't need to have this set. You could actually just use like a paper plate and then take an actual sheet of paper and get it wet and let that paper plate with the damp um, piece of paper become your wet palette at home. And that'll save you on paints and it'll also uh, reduce the likelihood that anything like in your paint is going to start globbing up. Um, and that's a really important thing when you're doing minis because you don't want big, thick globs of paint that are, you know, partially dried out, hiding those wonderful details that you get from your minis. So I'm going to let this paper set per the directions and just let it sit in this really hot water in the sink for about 15 minutes. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step with preparing the actual paints. Okay. We got our wet palette ready to go, but I wanted to backtrack for a second. So when you're dealing with mini paints, it's important to keep them mixed continuously. Um, if you have to, you have to shake these vigorously. Like some people do this, some people actually slap the, the paint, flip it upside down. Um, recently I was the beneficiary of this awesome mini paint shaker. So I'm going to actually use it. I'm going to take the cap off very carefully. I'm going to wiggle my way out of this and pull that out. I'm going to put one of these little BBs in there and then close it right back up. Okay. And I'm going to repeat this process for all the paints that I know I'm going to be using for this initial step, which is basically um, involves me painting the flesh tones. Um, I've got to do this pretty carefully because I don't want to ruin the stopper. I have three different flesh tones here that I'm going to mix for today's first layer of stuff. So I want to make sure all of them have a BB and I'm going to put them all in the shaker. There's something truly satisfying about the ease with which this works, but again, if you don't have a paint shaker, you just manually do that um, to the best of your ability. Okay, so it's a little bit messy at first, but it works. All right, let's shake this up. So here's my Barbarian Flesh. I'm going to give it a little vigorous shake. And you can actually hear the BB in there. Now I'm going to go full blast. I'm going to strap this guy in and take him for a ride. Here we go. The 
This little portable unit is awesome. I could turn it in multiple directions if I want. I don't know if they recommend doing that, but I'm going to do that. So. And maybe after about 30 seconds, I feel like my paint's going to be well mixed, much more so than if I just tried to do it manually. Strap this next guy in there. Take him for a ride. Get to the bottom of the bottle. Flip it upside down. Fantastic. Last one. Et voila! My three flesh tones are now mixed, so I can actually begin step one of this painting tutorial. Okay guys, so um, I have separated these minis out into a few categories. Um, for starters, I only have the plastic minis right now, and I um, have separated out the metal minis because I'm going to do that in another chunk. But what I kind of wanted to do um, was was the flesh tones first. I wanted to paint the skins uh, first. Now, I'm removing people who have, like, there are some of these minis who have, like, full masks and, like, gas masks and body suits and stuff where you, you don't even see any flesh. So I'm, I'm going to kind of set those aside um, because that's not going to really involve very much in the way of um, doing things. So what's left is basically three categories uh, because I, I don't want all of these minis to appear in one flesh tone. I don't think that's a very realistic depiction of our world. Um, so basically what I've done is divided them up into kind of uh, darker flesh tones, fair skins, and then kind of medium tones. Um, and I don't know exactly how well this is going to work, but the thing to remember is, is if you paint on a flesh tone, and it dries and you don't like it, you can always kind of lighten it up. You can mix and lighten it up or you can mix and darken it up. But I, I need to put on a base layer of these flesh tones so that I can get a good feeling for how they're gonna look. Um, and I've already kind of determined that one thing I could do is after putting on this base layer, if I wanna darken up a few in one pile, I can add a little you know, brown or a warmer color and um, darken it up. Very, very little um, has to be done in the way of that. You don't want too drastic or extreme. Um, you you want to have variations that are subtle, like noticeable enough on the table, but subtle in terms of your paint. So um, that's kind of where I'm going to start. So I'm actually going to start with the darkest of the existing tones. Um, if you're if you're using your own paints, this is basically a brownish um, shade. Uh, this would be like my people of color, um, and, and if it's you're using the actual army paint or war paints, this is tanned flesh. And again, I might, depending on how this dries, I might want this to be darker, so I might go back over it with a little more brown, uh, darker brown mixed in with this flesh tone to see if I can get some variation. But let's see how this goes. All right, again, you can cut, Dave because this is all going to be done separately. So I'm going to put those guys there. I'm going to put all the fair-skinned white people over there with theirs, and then I'm going to bring out these guys.
Okay, you back in? So here's that tan flesh that I'm going to use. Um, just going to put a little bit on the wet palette and see where we go with that. Got my water over here, some paper towels. Um, and this doesn't have to be a super fine point because that's, as a first layer, it's, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to be a little sloppy. I'm not saying to be gratuitous. Um, don't overdo it, but at the same time, you know, don't be super worried about everything being perfect. So let's see, I'm gonna move these guys down here so I can get my full grip on. So this gentleman basically looks like Morpheus from um, the Matrix. He has a bald head. He has awesome sunglasses. And um, I'm just gonna try to avoid the sunglasses but also make sure I have enough coverage on his face. Well, see, too late. I already painted the sunglasses. Okay, so first layer's there. Now, I can't tell if this, if his hands are supposed to be hands or if he's wearing gloves. They look kind of like gloves, but what I'm going to do is paint them flesh tone anyway, just because I want to. I want to see how this looks. I want to see how it dries. Um, also, you know, some things while I'm just thinking out loud here. It might not be the best idea to drink like two giant coffees before you paint minis. As you could probably see in the close-up by my shaky hands. Um, steadying yourself while you're painting is an important thing. So, yeah. Don't drink too much coffee. So first impressions, this is very flesh tone. This is not the brown people tone that I'm looking for. Um, like I could tell that even though I'm gonna let this dry, I feel like this is gonna dry lighter than what I want. So I'm gonna grab a warm-ish brown. Um, something that's a little bit on the lighter side. I don't wanna do like fur brown or monster brown. Maybe I do. Okay. This, this might be the jam to do this. Is that going to do that every time I shake something? Hmm. I don't know about that. So I'm dropping a bit of this into here, and I'm going to mix this up. Give me a little more diversity in my browns. You know what? It needs more. So now I'm 50-50 with this mix. And let's see how this comes out. Um, and also, I guess, you know, another thing to reassure yourself is if you, another option is shading too. So like, if I really don't like how something looks, Oh, see, I, I like that. That's much better. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go too heavy on this guy. I don't want to lose the details because these sculpts. Over a little bit. Okay. These, these sculpts are not what I would call perfect to begin with. These are. Um, from the Viral Outbreak game collection, so they're not like as detailed as a lot of other sculpts. 
So I'm not gonna go too crazy on this dude, but I just wanted to see what this would look like and it's looking good so far. Let's paint another mini. This guy has a helmet and goggles on. So not a lot of flesh there, but he does have a face and I'm gonna make his face painted. And this is sloppy as hell. A lot of details are gonna have to go into that. Okay, what do we have next? This is a, some type of scientist ninja commando lady. Don't know, but um, she looks like a great candidate to try, try out my, my uh, people of color paint mixture. Get into the neck. Man, these are some tight sculpts. Okay. Um, not much, much else there, actually. She's like head to toe boots, commando style. All right. Here is a soldier of some kind. Can you see him okay, Dave? All right. I'm gonna give him a good covering on the flesh. Get that chin, get the neck, get the ears. Yep, he's wearing like a scarf too. Uh, 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 uh. All right, this is a some kind of executive level person because they are on the phone and it looks like they mean business. With actual exposed hands, how about that? Next up is this gentleman who is on a cell phone. He looks like some kind of scientist slash explorer. He has a beard and a hat. I will paint his facial features and his ear. Not super worried about um, overlapping onto his hat. He's wearing a turtleneck, so he doesn't have much in the way of neck and jawline to be painted. But um, he does have hands that are not gloved, which is cool. So it gives me a chance to see how this color looks on people's hands. His other hand is holding a cell phone, which I will have to meticulously, maybe it's a walkie-talkie, don't know. I'll have to meticulously get so there's that dude. Let me go back to Morpheus for a second. Still drying, but I definitely like that tone. I like it a lot more than what I originally saw. It reveals much more brown. Um, so that's good. That's kind of what I'm going for. All right, this is a radio operator maybe of some kind, but um, he is also like Morpheus bald headed, which is great, makes it easier to paint. Going in on those features, the chin line especially, got to get that chin line. And he's wearing like a a v-neck shirt so I got to get his neck which means I'm gonna be a little bit sloppy here but um, I don't want to have to go back and try to fix the neck later so working from the inside out is something I've learned by trial and error um, the idea being that you want to get the lowest points of where a person would be painted 
So that's their skin. Everything is over their skin, all their clothes. So you go to the next layer after that. Uh, he is wearing gloves. Okay. And then she is carrying some kind of weird device. I don't know what it is. Getting her neck and ears on both sides. Want to make sure we got that. Look underneath. So, I mean, for the price and the bulk quantity of minis that you get, these viral outbreak minis aren't bad. But again, you know, you have to know realistically what to expect when you're paying super cheap for a ton of minis. You, you get what you pay for. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, okay, so she has sleeves rolled up right there. Not sure if you could see that. So that gives me a good opportunity to hit that with some paint and see how this looks with more than just someone's basic uh, face. As long as you hold them right in that position, you can see every little detail. Awesome. My eyes in the studio, my eyes in the sky. The one, the only, Carafa. Okay, good. Back of her arm. And then her other arm is also needing to get hit with a little bit of that. And now is the time to go underneath there and get that because um, once I get into painting the details, like the straps of her, her bag and all that stuff, I don't want to mess that up, so... Okay, um, missed a little spot on the back of her neck that I'll have to clean up later, but there we go. Good, good, good. Very fine details on these guys. So let me migrate them up here so you can see how some of them look. Um, nice warm uh, colors there. I really like how that turned out. Um, so I'm going to bring up one of the metal minis, all right? And this, this was um, one of the metal minis from Reaper. And it's, uh, this guy is, he's a big dude, big dude. Um, so I'm going to hit him because he's got his arms out. You know, he's got a big face and sweaty head. So metal, metal for sure really benefits from that primer coat. This paint would not be sticking the same way had I not done that spray on primer. And dude here has a lot of surface area to cover. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm getting under his chin, his neck, his ears, anywhere where he would have exposed flesh because I can go back over and do his facial hair later, all that stuff, but I want to get all those, those elements done now. He's got colossally huge hands. So I'm going to get those fingers. Real, um, real nice detail on this mini. Real nice. He's got like a thermos. I don't know if there's a drink in there or soup. He basically looks like somebody going to his next game at a convention. Am I right, Carafa? Mm-hmm. 
Good, good, good so far. Get the back of his arms on this side. Yep, he's got like his dandy books in one hand and a thermos with his coffee in the other. First layer going on pretty good. And then not clumpy or anything like that. So now I'm just going to kind of go back over with a little extra cleanup coverage painting in one direction. That dried pretty quick actually on this side. And I will probably go over everybody's flesh tones one more time before I move on to anything else. It's just the nature of the game. All right, um, the rest of him is covered in, no, wait, it's not. He's wearing shorts, son of a gun. Now, one thing that I should have done is set up a, um, a holder for this dude before I started painting him. But this is kind of an impromptu situation right now because I wasn't planning on painting the metal guys, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm going to do it because I have this color. That's the, the main reason. And I kind of saw this dude as um, maybe a Latino or something. So I'm seeing how this warmer, browner color tone will work with him. And I think it's working pretty well, Dave. Pretty well. Let me see if I can flip him without effing up the paint job. Yep, I'm blocking my own light. Son of a biatch. There we go. How's that? Yeah. That guy's going to be dope. I'm going to come up with a great way to use him. Don't know yet how. Maybe he's like a Ghostbuster. But it's funny, if you look at the scale, I mean, he's got to be like 400 pounds, right? Six foot six. 400 pounds. Morpheus would be like, God damn. Um, but those viral outbreak minis are 28 millimeter. So they're smaller to begin with. This guy's more of like a 30 millimeter plus he's actually a big sculpt. I mean, now just from the same line, this is from the Reaper chronoscope line, you could see like his height even, you know, isn't that, that big compared to the, the other 30. This guy's a 30. So, man, that paint really sucked in the, uh, or I mean, that primer really sucked in the paint. Like, this guy's almost dry right now. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to set him down there for a minute. Leave him be. Um, there's a couple other people I wanted to look at from the metal minis who might benefit from a warm color tone. Um, nope, that's my, those are nerdy white guys. These girls, um, no. That guy is a no. This guy is a no. Okay. All right, so here's another one of the metal minis, and this time I'm going to be smart and I'm gonna put her in a base. It's amazing how this wet palette preserves this paint. Okay, so here she is. Um, she has like long hair on the sides and a, uh, like a crop top. So I got to get her face, which is kind of getting a little messy right now, Bill. And then I got to get her tummy and her arms and hands.
Um, she's got a little bit of um, exposed back. So I'm gonna get that and get that other arm. Uh, it's gonna be tricky because I gotta get gotta get in there. Oh, that's fantastic. That really punches up a lot of the details. Now, doing her hair as it drapes over her arms and her shoulders is going to be a little bit tricky because the next step actually on her would be pretty much doing her shirt. And her hair draping over her shirt means her hair comes last. So I'm going to have to use a real fine brush for that. But as far as a first coat goes, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna let her dry over here. Now, second coat. I'm just gonna make sure my browns are all there. Yes, they are. Thank you, wet palette. And I'm gonna go with, actually, I'm gonna wash that brush out. I want a little more precision. So I'm gonna rinse this brush out and get a finer point brush. I found it. It's my Gen Con brush. It's got a sweet, sweet baby point. All right, I'm going to go over Morpheus. Bill, why do you lick your brushes? Because I like the taste of paint. Joke, just kidding. All right, just ever so much detail. I want to make sure Morpheus is right on the spot. Hmm. Layer two on his sweet bald head, looking good. And this time I will avoid the sunglasses, so I'm gonna hit his head, his forehead, his ears, but not the sunglasses, his cheeks. I guess the other thing that's reassuring is that if you, if you lose some details, you might be able to bring them back with highlights and a wash. Morpheus, you are going to be the man. I'm going to put you in the back of the line now, buddy. It's time for this next lady to come up. This is scientist lady carrying a bag. Going to get her both sides. I missed this spot along her nose, so I'm going to get that, get a little paint on there. And I'm going to get her arms. I want her arms to be nice and coated. And I missed a spot underneath there too. So we're gonna go under here. How's it looking, Dave? Yeah, still good. Okay. Rafa says we're still good. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Holy shit, am I shaky. I mean, this is ridiculous how shaky I am. All right, dude, dude, military dude with a gun. I'm um, gonna hit him on the side of the cheeks there, and this side there, and the chin, and the nose, good. Um, commando ninja lady, same thing, cheeks, cheeks, Do a quick once over, losing a lot of detail there on her eyes, which is disappointing, but. You get what you pay for, and I didn't pay very much, because these things are cheap, and am ultimately, who cares? I'm not in this for a contest, people. 
you know this. These are just minis that are going to be on the table. We are handling this situation in bulk, friends. Got a lot of minis to paint. A lot of minis. Probably got a lot of time to kill, though, don't we, Dave? Hashtag quarantine. Okay, good, good, good. Man, now I'm just going to say, here's another call for action, people. This wet palette is saving the day. If I had just had this stuff on a piece of paper or paper towel, it would have been dried out long ago. Look at how I'm going through this row of minis, and this stuff is still in great shape. No clumping happening. So this dude's going to be a challenge down the line because he has a beard that is very, it's got a little bit of texture. I don't want to make sure I hit his face and, and ears really well. I'm going back over his hands, especially the parts that would be exposed to the light. I'm going to have to detail that walkie talkie or cell phone that he's holding. Modern minis, a true challenge in painting. Not like a dude who's just wearing armor where all you have to do is hit his flesh tones and some armor with a metallic. Um, yeah. I kind of screwed up there. Let me take off some paint. Kind of over clumped the side of her face. There we go. All right, the last guy is my bald headed radio operator. Like Morpheus, I'm going to go heavy on that dome. Top of the dome, especially. The back and sides of the head and his cheeks. and just a light dusting over his face. We good. Back to my girl. She's dried very well. And again, this primer really soaks up the paint, especially on these metal minis. So let me dip, dip a little trip up on that because I don't want her looking like a gray, screen, gray skinned um, android. Get that belly shirt. Mm-hmm. Shit. Fuck. All right. I'm going to have to go in for deep surgery here. I didn't see the extent to which the belly shirt goes to the side. So I want to get her hands. Make sure I got her fingertips. Elbow. back of her arm, and then her back, which is also part tied in with the shirt, and then her left arm, especially the major kind of areas that are exposed, I want to make sure we got that covered. When you see paint filling in areas, it really helps to see the details sometimes. And in this case, I'm seeing that I should have used a, I don't know if you could see this, this level of detail, but it looks like there's a spike sticking out of her arm right about there. I should have used a very fine sandpaper to sand that off. That's from the actual mold. Um, I didn't notice it before, and now she looks like a bone demon. What the fuck? All right. Yeah, see, you can kind of see it right there. Um, I, you know what? If I was doing this as like a masterpiece, I would care more, but I don't. So, All right, and finally, 
We're going to use up some paint on Big Dude because he's got a lot of surface area to cover. Um, although I don't want it to be that thick. So, arms. Hands. Coverage. His thick neck, his ears and his chin, his cheeks and his forehead, his face under his chin. What did you say, Dave? Oh, wow, behind his ear. I missed that the first go around. Okay, then his hands, we don't want him to look ashy. So I'm gonna go back over and nail, nail in some of those little details there. Make sure that his, his skin is covered. And again, for this sculpt, I'm guessing that because of the details, I am going to have to do some, some heavy duty cleanup work. But it's better to get Nice couple coats of the flesh on there. Mama just killed a man, put a gun against his head. All right, going to get the uh, his legs, his stubby legs because he's wearing shorts. No fuck. All right, well. And I'm gonna put him on a base, if I can, without effing him up. There we go. All right, it's showtime, baby. Let's see what a few of these dudes look like. Um, where was my girl with the arms? There you go. Oh yeah, that's so much better. All right, well, phase one of the, uh, the flesh tones is done. In the next video, I'll be moving on to my mid-tone folks.